each time you expand and you grow, you're going to feel a little bit uncomfortable. But if you have these tools on board, you don't have to then judge yourself for feeling uncomfortable. You're going to use it as an indication of expansion and then we just thrive through that, just expand through them. So at its core, positive intelligence is about understanding the saboteurs, understanding the intuitive brain. It's about understanding your physiological brain and your emotions so that you get to be wholly you. You get to be whomever you feel is your essence, but you get to do it from a place of appreciation, joy, and really liking oneself. Hi, thank you for joining me for this episode of Intuition, Your Success Compass. I'm Vicki, thank you for being here. If you're, this is the first time you're here, welcome. Uh, if you've been here all along, welcome <laughs> back. I do appreciate you being here because to me, it feels like getting together with friends. And in a world where it can feel somewhat disconnected or like we're in our own personal journey all the time, I feel like connection is something that we've been missing and that we have to be absolutely more intentional about. So for today's episode, we are going to talk about something that actually helped me connect my brain to my intuition and just create this whole person that I feel so blessed to show up no matter where I go. I am who I am. And I actually like me. And I don't know about you, but that has been a freaking journey to arrive here and to feel like it's even okay to do that and to say it out loud and to say, I really like who I am. I love my sense of humor. My life is amazing. And I want all of that for every person walking around the planet or rolling around the planet or swimming around the planet, however we navigate. I, it's a blessing to be a human, to be a soul that agrees to be a human. And it's hard. It's freaking hard sometimes. We have both this non-physical wiring and our physical wiring, our neural pathways, our sympathetic system, our parasympathetic system our uh, nervous system, our esoteric system. Like, there's so much going on, my friend. And that's part of why you might feel weird sometimes. There's a lot of processing. So in talking about the combination of that, I'm going to take you back a little bit. Back to about 2012, when I had an intuitive hint that my husband at the time was passing and I just felt it viscerally and I didn't know necessarily how to work with that. And then I also thought, well, does that mean we're divorced? Does that mean that he's passing physically? Does it mean that, you know, his personality changes so much because of, you know, the depression that he struggled with in this lifetime. And I didn't really know what it was, but I knew it was permanent. So I knew that whatever we had there of over 20 years was going to be coming to a completion. And that scared me. It, it upset me because he really was my best friend. Like we worked really hard since it, I was 19 when we met, 21 when we got married, 23, when we had our daughter. And, you know, this was a process and a, and a time and a growing up together along with a, very, a kind of stressful life with his kids from a previous marriage. And it just took a lot of energy, patience, which thankfully I came into this world with a lot of, and love to make it work. And I'm so grateful for that. And yet that was an incredibly challenging, painful time for me. And for him, once he figured out, because he had said to me, something's different, something's changed, what's going on? And what I'm going to say to the guy, I had a premonition of you croaking. 
And I don't know what to do with that. I don't know how to process that information. I did eventually tell him and he's like, I'm not going anywhere. I promise you I'm not going anywhere. And I'm like, hmm, feels like a lie too. Keep in mind, I make my living as an intuitive, as a psychic person. So as much as I can tell my brain a story, my gut and my, my senses won't let me lie about things like that. So sometimes I can be the most effective compartmentalizer you have ever met because you still have to walk through life. So at this time, though, I was practical enough to realize that I needed to get my stuff together. And if I didn't get my stuff together emotionally, physically, financially, then it was going to be a really difficult haul for me. I didn't have a clear sense of the timing of it, but I definitely had the knowing. So the first place I went was physical. I did feel like it was going to be a health issue with him. So I contacted my friend and said, hey, your kid who has his degree in exercise science, does he take on personal clients because I adore him? And if I'm going to work with someone, it's going to have to be somebody that I won't BS or that I won't cancel on because I'm too busy or just didn't get around to it. I needed to show up for him before I showed up for myself. And I knew, intuitively knew this. So I set the course, set that in action and couldn't walk for the first three days after the first workout we did. Yeah, because evidently I had never worked out in my life, even getting out of the car when I, coming back from the first, from the assessments. Although he did push me pretty far on that one. We both agreed that he went out of the gate a little fast in his excitement. It's okay. It's been over 10 years and I still adore him and still very much rely on his knowledge and his pushing. So love you, Justin. I also knew that I needed to get myself together in an, in a brain way, like in an emotional, in a, an independence, but an independence that wasn't through sheer determination or uh, just dragging myself through the motions or making things happen. I had enough will. I had enough drive, but I didn't have, I didn't feel like the emotional maturity and security within myself to navigate that process without completely falling apart. And I also knew that I would have kids to support and grandkids to support through this process. And at the time I was working as a medium. So I understood what the crossing process is, was, still remains to this day. Not much has changed in my belief around that or my knowing, but I recognized the enormity of it as well as the blessing of it. I still feel like it's a blessing for all of us to be able to live this life and then to leave our physical bodies and, and continue on. So all of this was going on. And I thought, better get my shit together. Because if I don't get my shit together, I don't know how I'm going to run a business and be there for people who are grieving, who are asking for my guidance in my pretty established business at that point of coaching. How am I going to do this and still heal myself? So in my very practical, let's figure things out way, I began studying neuropathway work and got certified in that and then changed it up to do my own, adding my special sauce in there with the intuition and worked with my conscious circuitry for years in addition to the coaching. And then when it came to be that he did pass, like to go on record, that he did crash on the table on the date I said he was going to, but they brought him back. And he denied that for a year, the little bugger. And then he finally admitted, yeah, I did actually leave. I said, see, you told me that you weren't going anywhere. I knew you, you were, and I just wanted that to be honored. I was stubborn enough to want my knowing, my track record to be honored. And I still knew he wasn't here for very long. And I wanted to be optimal in our relationship. I wanted to be optimal in myself. So fast forward, I do all the neuropathway work and I get through it pretty well. I feel like we handled it in a way that was very respectful to him. 
The only regret I have is I wasn't more present to him at the time. Like I, I really felt at the time that him sleeping and him preparing to cross was the best use. And now I look at it and think, hmm, I would have liked to have had a few more conversations. And that's my only regret. And I'm good with that. I feel like we had humor and I did all the messy medical stuff and handled that with class and humor. I mean, there were some jokes. I mean, you have to, dark humor is still healing. What the, the reason I'm sharing this with you now is my knowing that my head being in a really good, well-adjusted place was going to facilitate an ease in my grief process. And it was going to help him transition in a way that was respectful to his soul and to myself. And in that exploration and in that were, I could also bring that to my clients, which I've continued to do. So you know how we keep growing and we keep expanding and it, sometimes it feels uncomfortable and it feels like there's got to be more. Well, fast forward a few years and I was feeling that. I was feeling a bit of a lackluster in my business, to be truthful. I was feeling like the same old every day. Love my clients, love my sessions, wasn't feeling lit up about what I was able to bring. It was feeling pretty redundant. I was thrilled that they get the results that they get. And yet I I wasn't being truthful to myself. I wouldn't be truthful to myself if I had ignored that feeling. Because the more lit up I am about my work, I bring that to my work and I bring that to my clients. And that's when they do their work, they get the, the success, right? Success compass. We have to follow that direction. And my north was wonky. <laughs> Like, I just didn't know what I was doing, where I was going. So as I've talked about before, if you've listened to the other episodes, if not, here you go. Along comes positive intelligence. Shirzad Shamin's work, um, along with a few other very respected coaches in the field and business development people. And just this lovely, lovely collection of people. And I felt like I found my pod. This was suggested to me from a client, actually. I'm very grateful because it she said it was very similar to what I talk about in, yes, we're physical and we have a soul running through us. So, yes, we have to be practical. We have to apply steps and we have to apply knowledge about the gray matter that we have in the neural pathways. In order to create a life that is full. And that is my intention here. I want to squeeze as much out of life as possible. I want to learn. I want to rest. I want to have reverence for why I'm here, how I'm here, and be here. And so often my head was so far ahead, right? Like it was just running away with itself. And I see that in a lot of people. So positive intelligence comes along and I do the whole program and I continue on with the coach training. And then now I'm bringing that to my clients and the results I'm seeing and that they're seeing, we get to celebrate. Yes, we're looking at blocks and I'm still very much in the intuitive sense of this feels off. Can we talk about that? And then shifting that with in real time. But at the same time, giving them these tools and open up the door to having a brain you really love and having a life that feels fascinating and fulfilling in whatever that means. So I'm talking about this because I just had somebody yesterday say to me, she's in the process I was in with my late husband, Howard. And she said, how did you get through it? And on reflection, I'm like, I made sure my head was okay. I had all of this belief and spirit and everything, but I had to make sure my head was okay. And I'm so grateful for that. And now there is this system, and it is a system, but it's also a way of being, a way of living in learning to embrace the wiring that you have 
and also show up for some of the exercises necessary. 10 seconds. We can all do 10 seconds. So I'm going to talk about this a little bit because I'm also going to bring the program that I took through Positive Intelligence. And it's a six-week program where you get yours truly in a live session once a week, but you also get the support of the app and you get the teachings of Shirzad and you get the playbook. I've been saying for those of us old enough, those of you old enough, you'll remember clip notes. I don't know if they're still around. Probably not. It's probably Wikipedia now or something, but it felt like somebody handed me the clip notes to my brain as well as how I could figure out how to connect intuition to that. And that's my specialty is having your physical brain work with your intuitive brain, work with your spirit mind and have it all be embodied in a way that even through the more challenging times, you have a joy of being able to experience this. So what is positive intelligence? Positive intelligence is actually recognizing when the judge or the critic is speaking and in charge or your brain has been absolutely kidnapped or hijacked or taken off scene, offline, however you want to refer to it. And it has you acknowledge that, oh, that's what's happening right now. And there'll be a link to the assessment if you want to take it that will list the saboteurs. We all share judge. Isn't that sweet that we all get to share the critic or the judge? And then there are nine more that have been defined. And they probably won't come as much of a surprise because there are other systems that are are similar, right? If you've taken any kind of personality assessment, you're going to see some similarities in there. But the reason I love positive intelligence is it is clearly defined and there is so much in life that's not, but it also doesn't put us in a box. We're not hemmed in. You know how some of those assessments will say, well, you're this personality or you're this number or you're this zodiac sign. So you must be this. The reason I love this, the positive intelligence framework is that's not what it's about. It's about understanding your physiological brain and your emotions so that you get to be wholly you. You get to be whomever you feel is your essence, but you get to do it from a place of appreciation, joy, and really liking oneself. And that's where I feel like, and I've said it for years, we can create this ripple effect. That if we really like and love ourselves, we're not going to be looking to others. We're not going to be looking to judge them or to judge circumstances or to be miserable. We're going to want to share that with others. And this is a tool in order to understand your own wiring and understand that, yes, we have these saboteurs on board. And yes, we're always going to have these saboteurs on board. I feel like so many programs promise this, you'll feel amazing and then it's going to be, you know, rainbows and unicorn farts for the rest of your life that smell like skills or something. When that's not possible because each time you expand and you grow, you're going to feel a little bit uncomfortable. But if you have these tools on board, you don't have to then judge yourself for feeling uncomfortable. You're going to use it as an indication of expansion. And then we just thrive through that, right? Just expand through them. So at its core, positive intelligence is about understanding the saboteurs, understanding the intuitive brain. He refers to it as the sage. I've always called it the soul. It's your intuitive self. And then doing the reps, doing the work, much like I've done over the years or you've done over the years in showing up for your gym workouts or going outside to work or going to the stable and moving poop because holy macaroni, is that a workout? I'm here to tell you. So there's, it's necessary for us to have all these components, but also feel good about them. There's such a message 
about feeling put upon for being human or that life is a struggle and then you die. My husband, my late husband used to actually say that. And I'm like, I don't get where you're coming at from that. Yes, times can be difficult and we go through things that, no, I don't think we should say love and light to everything. Some stuff sucks. It just sucks. But how are you navigating it? And this was part of when Howard was going through his process, I had a doctor say to me, I can't tell if you're in denial or you're this well adjusted. And I mean, at the time, my brain wouldn't allow me to say, it was probably my judge in me, wouldn't allow me to say, oh, I'm well this, this well adjusted. Now I'd say. But what I said to her is, I'm not in denial. I've known this for years. This is the timing of it. And I will show up for this. I will show up for this because I want to respect who I am, who I live with inside my own head when this is done. So the reason I get so lit up about this and excited is I want everybody on the planet walking around with this because then I know that there will be self-love and that love will radiate. We're always going to have sociopaths. There's nothing I can do about that. This is a great system, but they would likely wouldn't use the system. So there's a difference between mental health. I am not a mental health professional. I've always been very clear about when someone needs a therapist, can benefit from both of us maybe, but know my line, know my level. But mental fitness and mental balance along with spiritual joy I know how to nail that one. So this is what I'm talking about when I say we blend positive intelligence with intuition because intuition is that gift that you came in with. I promise you did. Everyone did. And we have to learn to merge it, to, to connect it with our cognitive, quite literally our gray matter and our neural pathways. And I feel like, you know, this is a very unique platform because I love the human element and I love the soul element and I love connecting them. And then there's even a portion of your brain, the corpus callosum, that is meant to do that. Come on. This is like life's math where we get to be excited about it. So one of the things that mental fitness does is it clears that clutter. Like it just takes all that that's going on in there and it dissipates it. Now, if you're someone with attention diversity, you may still have a very active brain. Or if you are someone with, I have one client who is absolutely brilliant. He, like, I know he's brilliant. And his brain moves so fast that sometimes I have to slow mine down when I'm working with him to get his to a pace that can accept change. And that's where being able to read energy and, and work with the energy and explain it to someone comes in handy because we can slow that runaway train and then you can affect change, right? So it's exciting. And that's why I decided to do the programs. I didn't have to. It's not a condition of being a positive intelligence coach. However, I, again, want this out there with the special sauce of intuition so that we can all start to communicate on a higher level and on a level that is respectful of all beings. And then we have to do the work. Just like last night, we did a strength workout, bench press, hit a new PR. Thank you very much. <laughs> and some of that is because in my head, I am no longer saying this is so hard. This is so hard. Well, yeah, it's weight. They're heavy. But that's the point, right? Bone density, strength, being able to flip a bucket of poop takes strength. I got to do that strength in other places and not just at the farm. So in my workout, I remember saying to Mike at the end of it that while I had to effort, my brain didn't effort. My brain showed up and just pushed and just pushed. 
And I'm so excited because I have been working on this freaking late for over 10 years, 10 years, and finally hit that. And I'm excited that next time, yes, I know for all the trainers listening to this, I know I have to go up and away and struggle. I'm so excited about that struggle because that will also reinforce to me that when I show up in the mental fitness gym, I can show up in the gym or in life in a way that I appreciate the challenge and I feel good about myself afterwards because that's where I go. I fast forward myself to what is this going to feel like after? And then I come back to the present moment and then I'm able to not grunt as much <laughs> when I'm trying to get that that bar up. So there is a, a massive importance to quieting our inner saboteurs and there is a massive importance to doing the work in order to quiet those. But I don't feel like the work should be hard. I feel like the work that we can do to shift our neural pathways should be like going up in a bench press incrementally. Maybe you do have one pound plates and you're not jumping five pounds because five pounds would feel like failure. And likely would be, and that's okay to go to muscle failure. But when that judge is active, that muscle failure can also translate to brain failure and a feeling of that you failed rather, not a brain failure. So quieting the saboteurs is an ongoing process. It's not take a weekend and all of a sudden you're, you're vibing at the highest level. This is an ongoing thing that we can celebrate. But when you're quieter, those intuitive insights come in on a more effective, faster rate and in a way that can lead to focused action because your intuitive brain is on the right side. And for those of you listening and not in visual, if you follow like, the pupil of your eye, up to the right side at just a little bit of goal. Don't ask me about geometry. It's not my strong suit. It's not even a suit I can wear. So if you follow that up, the intuitive wiring is right in the front third of your brain. That gets more and more activated the quieter your left brain is. You get to hear your soul self. You get to access that wisdom that you came in with yeah, I do feel like we have a little amnesia, but we also add to in our life process, okay? So the work, the PQ reps, positive quotient reps are focused on a physical aspect. So you're rubbing your fingers together enough that you can feel the ridges on your fingers. You are wiggling your toes. You're clenching your butt cheeks. <laughs> You're rubbing your hands on your thighs. That one works really well for me for some reason. Maybe it's the, there's acreage there to access. But you, it works really well for me to go up and down my IT band, which is also a big energy channel. So that's likely what it is. But taking the time to do that for 10 seconds, you can do this without going through a program. Like go ahead and do it. Take 10 seconds every time you hear that voice showing up in your head that's denigrating you or that's saying, oh, you could have done that differently. Why didn't you do that differently? Take 10 seconds and say, nope, not happening, judge. Thanks for showing up, but nope, not happening. So I intend to bring the synergy between int intuition and positive intelligence because I know how smart you are. And I want your brain to work in a way that's supportive for you and that allows you to endeavor, to try things, to expand, and to feel a belief in self. Self-surety is an expression that I have used for so long. And it, when I looked it up, there wasn't a definition. There wasn't even the combination of the two words. And I thought, well, I like this over confidence because confidence to me feels like I'm doing it for you. 
I'm going to show up confident so you feel better, so that there's a conveyance. It feels inauthentic. Self-surety to me is that feeling of, I don't know everything. I can't possibly know everything. I don't want to know everything because learning is so important. And I can be sure of myself. I can believe in my own track record, in my ability to navigate this world and any situation that shows up. And I can feel really good about asking for help. Because when you don't worry about not knowing everything, imposter syndrome goes away. It just goes away. Because you realize I'm not an imposter. I'm in my own life. I just don't know something. But that wiring has to be attended to with these steps, with countering the voice that shows up in your head, but doing it in a loving way. It's never made sense to me to judge your judge or your critic. I've always said, treated it like a five-year-old. Well, not always. Once I became aware that I had to address that negative voice in my head, I decided that it was a five-year-old lost at the grocery store and I was going to direct it to customer service so that it could reunite with their family. And because that would just touch my heart to see a little one scared. And that's what's happening, right? Most of our saboteurs, if not all, get established in childhood and then we act them out in adulthood. And I know it is a feeling of great joy and expansion and pride even to be able to say, yeah, I used to be run by my restless brain. Oh boy, has she been active lately? Oh my goodness. So see, it's ongoing, but I can recognize it, not judge it, and each time it comes up, I've said, all right, what do you need? Do you need some water? Do we need to walk away from the computer? That was very true a couple of days ago. I was like, I don't walk away from this computer. I've been staring at it for six hours. I need to go. And that helped. And then I could return to, you know, what I had to do with a lit up energy. So it's about understanding your wiring, understanding your brain, but also opening up the channels to bring in more intuitive insights and just like if you want to run a faster mile sometimes you slow it down you slow down and you appreciate the fact that your body's still moving and then the conditioning shows up and then maybe you can do some sprints or fart licks they're called I will always have that 12 year old in me who thinks that word is funny so then as you overcome self-doubt and as you move through it and imposter syndrome goes, you end up in the world authentic. Like there's such a buzzword about, you know, that word, it, that word becomes a buzzword about be authentic. But then people are lying about who they are. And I'm like, that's not authentic. That's, ooh, that's not going to happen. You have to do some work. We can't just live in the woo. There has to be some work. You can have a combination. Maybe you appreciate both. Maybe we don't denigrate intuition and call it woo-woo anymore. Maybe we say, I really want to feel to the highest level of my feeling, and I don't want it to be in charge of me anymore. So this is the blend, and this is what I will be sharing and using and teaching in the six-week program that comes up at the end of September. And you'll be hearing more about that and you'll get, you can sign up for um, my email and it will just come to you automatically if you'd like to do that. I want to encourage you to tune into your intuition so much that it becomes that first sense that this podcast used to be called, Intuition, Your First Sense. And it becomes that success compass for you that you follow it. And all of that static, that's in the way of putting you down or, you know, imposter syndrome or a doubt about who you are, or your intelligence, sadness. I want the sadness to be out of people so that, you know, maybe that sadness is there for what lines up. Somebody passes, a pet's sick, 
there's true reasons for sadness. I wouldn't even want to eliminate that because I feel like it does amplify the joy of getting to be part of a process. Like I was incredibly sad and still feel it sometimes, even nine years later about how it's passing. And yet I know it was my intuitive knowing, but also my fortitude and my willingness to do the emotional work before he passed that allowed me to embrace him and what he needed, but also embrace myself afterwards. I had people say to me after, I'm hoping it was coming from a place of love, but say to me that you're not falling apart, so therefore you didn't love him. And I'm like, how is me falling apart honoring and respecting the connection we had? He would be so that's not possible on the other side. We don't get that. <laughs> but he would feel like that was me not taking care of me. He actually made me promise before he passed that I would not change who I was, that I would still be me, that I wouldn't allow that experience to change my loving heart and my compassion itself. And that promise helped me. I'm so grateful that he asked that of me because it did help me sometimes when I did want to slide into more of a more of a pity party than grief because it can be so enticing sometimes to be there. But it truly is respectful of those who are going through anything, even, you know, a mental health crisis and you're, you want to help them. It does help them to get in there with them. It helps to empathize. But sometimes what they need most is for us to know who we are and to be in our own strength and surety so that the world feels too. And maybe you need that from someone else. So you decide to do this program with them. I hope to see you there. I hope that in the meantime, you start recognizing that voice that's in there. Don't judge it. Acknowledge it. Even give it a little bit of love and say, I, I understand that you may have been installed in childhood. I'm the I'm the adult in charge here now, so I will be asking you to focus on my breath. I will be asking you to focus on my fingers that I'm rubbing together. I will be asking you to walk in a way that is contemplative because that unhooks part of your brain that wants to judge and critique everything. And it opens you up to your intuitive abilities that are right there. I promise you, they are right there. And you know what it also does is it encourages you to appreciate quiet and not see it as something penalizing that you always have to be busy, 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 busy. That's my restless speaking right there always be busy so that it can feel productive, but it's not healthy for our brain either. So thank you for being here. I really appreciate that you tune in and that you share and you leave comments and reviews and that you most of all are here to understand yourself and to be able to bring success in whatever that looks like in your life and that I get to share this universe with you. So thanks for coming along. Thanks for listening. And I will see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to this episode of Intuition, Your Success Compass. I appreciate you being here. If you would like more information about developing your intuitive skills, removing those blocks, and creating the life that feels the most successful to you, then head on over to vickybaird.com. That's V-I-C-K-I-B-A-I-R-D.com. And check out the courses, the groups, and the Spaces app that will allow you to be part of our community and know about upcoming events and specials. Thank you so much, and I'll see you in the next episode.